hit the raise your hand function and we will call on you. Bayless, can you hear us? Yes, sir. I can hear you guys. Perfect. We'll start with Vince Ferrar and then we'll go to David Pascal. Bayless, tell us first opportunity to, to talk to you. Tell us what your Tennessee experience has been like so far. Um, my Tennessee experience has been a great experience, you know, um, bonding with my brothers, my teammates, um, the offense, the QBs, it's been a great experience. Um, it's nothing like SEC football. And, you know, this is something I dreamed about ever since I was a kid coming up, and, you know, just making dreams realities. So it's been a great experience. And, you know, we've been blessed to have fans at the stadiums um, due to COVID. And so, like, you know, I can't complain. I'm just blessed to be here. And then just a quick follow-up, obviously your relationship with T. Martin, I assume, had a big, uh, a big impact in you choosing Tennessee. Talk about T's involvement in you coming to Tennessee. Um, yes, um, T was my former coach at the University of Southern California. Um, it was big on my decision, but not only that, um, knowing the history of um, Coach Pruitt um, and like what he's did in his um, time being a coach, and his accomplishments and, you know, and Jim Chaney as well. And also um, the absence of um, the two top receivers that had left um, for the draft, the, that played a big role um, for me coming here as well. So, yeah. Bayless, you've talked about what you've liked about this new experience. What's been the biggest challenge for you uh, since arriving at Tennessee in this season? I mean, it's not, it's not I wouldn't say like a challenge, um, it's just the difference between playing Pac-12, Pac-12 football and SEC football. We know the SEC is like a junior varsity for the NFL. You know, players are a lot bigger, stronger, faster this, uh, faster this game. You know, it's a lot physical and stuff. So I wouldn't say challenges, but, you know, um, first time in this system, um, familiar, um, just different, ter um, different terminology. So I wouldn't say like challenges, you know, just like, you know, like adapting, you know, just getting a feel for everything. And then I guess the last game was obviously disappointing at Arkansas, but Coach Pruitt after the game said he wants to take more uh, shots and kind of open things up, be a little more aggressive. Did you like, did you like hearing that? And is that something you'd love to be a part of? Um, yes, um, I'm a part of like everything with my coaches. You know, they call the plays and we line up and run them. And, you know, we're going to live by that and die, and we're going to die about that. Um, Men, the offensive guys. And, you know, if they call a play, we just got to go out there and execute at the end of the day, you know. Um, I feel like there's no such thing as a, a bad play call. You know, you can turn the call good or you can turn it bad. And so, you know, um, us as an offense, you know, we're just going to stick together. And, you know, we're just going to keep working our butts off. David Oven and Ben McKee. Uh, yeah, Vince, what do you, how do, what do you kind of see as your role in, in this offense? And how would you assess your performance this season? Um, I see my role in this offense um, as a veteran, you know, giving knowledge, because it's all about giving knowledge to the younger guys, because once you leave, you know, you're replaced. And, you know, just taking those younger guys up under my wing and stuff and giving them as much knowledge as possible, you know, and hopefully turning them better players than I, than I am. And um, also, you know, I'm, I'm here for my team any way I can help my team be successful to get a win at the end of the day or night, you know, is um, good for me. So I feel like, you know, my purpose is to be the best team player I can be and, you know, and also better myself and my skill set to help my team um, be successful. So, yeah, that's my I feel like. Bayless, I'm, I'm I'm curious with the NCAA granting this a, a free year of eligibility, how much thought you've given to returning for a second senior season? I mean, I'm just like focused on the task at hand, you know, um, due to this COVID and these postponing games, you know, I'm just taking it one step at a time. You know, that's what I've been trying to get better at um, over my years of being um, a college football player. You know, just stop thinking, um, just stop thinking ahead and, you know, and live in the moment and, you know, and work your tail off in the moment and stuff. So when that time comes, like that time will come. And so that's where I'm at with that right now. You know, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I'm here now and I'm going to work, you know, work my tail off for my team to make sure we win the games at the end of the day. Trey Wallace and Patrick Brown. 
Valus, you and the other wide receiver group, what will, I know that, that you had had thoughts of, of coming to Tennessee prior to this season. Um, w- when you finally made that move to, to Knoxville, what was it like getting in there during COVID, being able to, to get with these wide receivers, try to get on the same page? Uh, I, I know last time you were thinking about it, Jennings and Callaway were still here. What's that relationship been like now uh, with the other guys? Um, yes, you know, um, my the year um, last year um, before last season when I was at USC, you know, um, I was I had intentions on like coming here, but um, you know, I talked with the family and getting my degree was the best thing for me, so I stayed an extra year. And um, after this past season, you know, I came to Tennessee, and it's been a great experience. Like no other place I'd rather be, you know. Even though times were tough, you know, when this um, COVID was going on, like we were limited to the things we can do. Um, so every chance, you know, we got, you know, we bun, whether it was, you know, going out as a group, you know, every chance we got to hit the field, you know, teach each other, learn from each other um, and like coach each other. Cause like at the end of the day, you know, it's about like the people, you know, people's playing on the field. Like we have to stick together and stuff. And so, I mean, it was, I can say it was challenging because it was limited. We were so limited to the things we can do, but I feel like we did a good job on um, the way we came along. Man, listen, and a follow-up to that real quick. T. Martin, you know, is a big part of why you came here, but him also being from the Mobile area, the, the areas that you grew up in and around, uh, how big is that to have somebody just from your hometown as your position coach? It can't be understated, can it? Yeah, um, it's a blessing. You know, not many players, you know, have that connection with their coaches. You know, him understanding me, understanding our background, our culture, where we come from. Um, you know, I, I look at it as a blessing. Um, it's like a different level, you know, a different level of like thinking and stuff like that. So he, like, he knows, he knows the type of player I am, type of player I am. He knows the type of young man I am, you know, and he knows like, my potential and where I can be, he's going to push me. So just, you know, having that and, you know, and him having that understanding of our background and where we came from uh, and, you know, how hard we worked to be in the position, me um, playing um, in, playing in the league in the future, you know, him being a coach now, you know, we just, um, it's just, it's just a great feeling to know like two kids from Mobile, Alabama, you know, out here chasing their dreams and stuff. And just to have him as a coach, it's a, it's a true blessing. Bayless, you, you came to Tennessee with a pretty strong reputation as a kickoff returner. Uh, is that something you've kind of always enjoyed? And, and what do you think makes uh, someone a good kickoff returner like you are? Um, I came in my – I came in – I went to USC, what, 2016. I registered my first year. And my former special team coach, um, Baxter, Coach Baxter, John Baxter, um, you know, he believed in me and I always believed in myself. And, you know, as, as a player, you have to believe in yourself, even if nobody will. And, you know, I always believed in myself and, you know, I can accomplish. I knew I can accomplish anything through Christ. You know, I'm a big believer in the Lord. And also uh, being motivated uh, for my cousin, uh, my older cousin, Colin Towner, that has like the uh, kickoff return average in the NCAA um, is the leader of that. So, you know, that being like motive and like, the athletes I had in my family, you know, just like my background, because, you know, football is like a culture in Mobile, Alabama. You know, I've been playing since I've been four years old and I haven't missed a year. So, you know, football is like everything to me. And so when you take that serious, like, you know, it's just been built in me. It's been built in me since I was young, you know, just, you know, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do it to the fullest. And I'll never, ever give a poor performance. I'll always give it my all. And so, you know, that was the mentality and the rest just took care of itself. We'll go back to Vince, then Gustavo. Vailas, two things, one at a time. One, I know a lot of guys always point to execution, why things aren't working out or, or, or having great success. But why do you think you guys haven't been able to have a lot of explosive plays offensively? Um, I will say – you know, like we just have to like stick together. You know, we have to stick to it. You know, the season's not over yet. And we know the season hasn't been the way we want it to, but we still got four more games and we can turn that all around. And so, you know, we're just going to stick to the strip. 
you know, at practice, everybody, you know, giving a hundred percent because it all starts at practice. You know, um, we have to stay tough on each other, you know, um, tough love, you know, we have to be a coach to one another, you know, we can't cut slack on one another. And like I said, we have four more games left in the season. So, and I definitely believe we can turn this around um, and with deep shots and all. Sorry, Vilas. And you talked about, you know, coaching and helping guys out, including the young guys that you want to do. Give us a little, a word or two on each of those freshmen that came in in that, in that big class and what you've seen from each of those guys. You say give you a word? Yeah, just you know, a sentence or two on each of the freshmen. What what you see from the skill set, potential, any of that kind of stuff. Um. Uh, well, Malachi Wadman, you know, I see a lot of potential. You know, he also played basketball. I'm pretty sure you guys seen some of his highlights. And, you know, and I just, you know, just telling him, you know, just be consistent and the rest will take care of itself. You know, he has the body frame and like his strength is high point balls. And, you know, if he can do that consistently, he could be playing in the league and making a lot of money for a long time. And, you know, Jalen Hyatt, um, you know, I told him, like, I told him he was a different receiver the first time I had met him. And I was like, his skill set, you know, not many people are able, you know, not, not many people are blessed with that skill set so early and stuff like that with his route running abilities. And, you know, he's blessed with speed and stuff. And so, you know, if you're really, whatever you're good at, you know, use that to your advantage and use that to the best of your abilities. And I've been telling them. And like, I believe in all the young freshmen and stuff. And I know they'll do great things here. They'll definitely be um, future All-Americans. Gustavo. Fellas, uh, how important was to have this open week to kind of get back to some fundamentals, to kind of get things back on track, especially with the things not going your way, uh, the team way in the past couple of games? You're talking about um, this um, this bye week we just had? Uh, yeah, yeah, this bye week. Yeah, how, how important it was to get things back on track? Um, you know, I feel like um, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, this was a blessing, you know, for us, you know, to get our feet back under ourselves, you know, people to heal up and stuff that got nicks and bruises and stuff like that. And I felt like this week was really important, you know, just to, you know, get back to the basics because there's no need to panic whatsoever, you know, just, you know, remember why and tell ourselves like why we did, like why we're doing this, why we're at Tennessee, um, why we're here to compete, you know, we're all here for the same reason and that's to win the SEC championship in the national championship, you know? And sometimes, you know, you have to remind yourself like why you're doing what you're doing. So I feel like, you know, um, this week was a, um, a great week, you know, to have, um, the, to reflect on ourselves and, you know, and who we are. So this week was much needed. Um, it was very much needed. And in terms of individual performance, I know uh, the team lost to Arkansas, but you had a great performance, a lot of season high in terms of your uh, stats. Do you see yourself getting better every week? Mm, yes, I see myself getting better every week. Um, it all starts at practice, though. You know, what you will put in is what you're going to get out, and you know. And everybody knows that. The greatest knows that. What you put in, the work you put in, you're going to get out. And, you know, the work you don't put in is going to show. And so, you know, me just staying, like, self-motivated, is uh, really important, you know, keeping my swagger, never, you know, get down on myself, always pushing each and every day um, for me has to be better as a leader and a player to help my team win. And last question to Jimmy, we have DeAndre here. Uh, uh, do you feel at this point that you could play all the receiver positions? Yes, um, I, uh, I am extremely blessed, you know, to um, be um, placed outside. You know, I've been labeled a lot as like a slot guy, you know, mm -hmm. in my career. And like me being outside is just, you know, taking it to a whole nother game. Not only on this level, it helped me for the next level as well. Um, them placing me out there, you know, learning to, um, to run the outside routes and stuff like that, which my route running abilities are uh, much improved. And so once you master the outside, and I feel like once they place you inside, you know, it's like, you know, taking candy from a baby. So um, I love I love playing outside, but now I'm in a position where I could be anywhere they need me to be on the field and know what to do. And you were asked about comparing the Pac-12 to the SEC. How would you compare Los Angeles to Knoxville? Hmm. I would say um, Los Angeles is a busy, uh, busy city. You know, the city doesn't sleep. There's always something going on, especially the population is way greater. Um, 
you know, just um, the population, this is more people and the weather, of course, you know, it gets real cold here. But the thing I can say about um, Knoxville, it's a home feeling. I'm like six hours and a half away from Mobile, Alabama. You know, my family get to come up here and see me play, you know, and that's not, um, I didn't have that much at um, SC. I probably get to see them like once or twice a year. They'll come out the one game, you know? Um, and so Knoxville is definitely a home feeling. Um, the people here um, love the people. People are very nice and stuff. You know, Los Angeles is just like a different animal. You know, it was definitely culture shock when I came out of high school going out there. But now I feel like I'm back in my element, being in Knoxville and like back to the basics.